It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Lauren Doyle, who is a U.S. rugby player. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to play professional rugby? Sure. Um, So I got recruited to play in college. Um, I'd never played before. So after my first season uh, at Eastern Illinois, my coach came to me and said that there was going to be a residency program for U.S. starting in uh, 2012. And because rugby was going to be like reinstated into the Olympics. And he was like, I want you to make it your goal to get into that residency program by then. And um, yeah, then I was, I got a little, took rugby a little bit more seriously (laughs) because I just, you know, thought it was a sport to play in college and there wasn't much after that. So um, yeah, then I uh, became part of the residency program in 2013. What was your time like at Eastern Illinois? Um, Yeah, so I played 15s at uh, Eastern and so now I play sevens and I've, I've only played sevens since I've been um, professional. So very different game, but a lot of the skills transfer into sevens. So yeah, I, I played a lot of, a lot of fifteens. <laughs> what was it like whenever you made the U S team? Um, let's see. Obviously it was like really cool. It was really cool to even like, that I got invited to go to camp. So I was like, whoa, really me? <laughs> but um, so yeah, when I first went and played with the US, we had gone to China and I'd never been out of the country before that. So um, it was just a huge experience for me. And um, yeah, you know, like one that I'll never forget, so. Of course, as you talked about, it was the first time you went out of country. What was that feeling like of going out of country to represent, of course, the United States playing rugby? Yeah. Um, you know, it was just a, it was like a big moment um, when everything kind of came into perspective for me and how uh, big this was and, and, you know, the sport is growing and um, yeah, just kind of realizing that I am going to be part of that um pioneering team that shows young women and and little girls like that they can play uh, a contact sport and rugby so yeah how did it feel the first time you got to wear the U.S. jersey and have your name on the back of it yeah I I still have that jersey it is at my parents house so um you know just just a huge huge moment that kind of hard to describe but um yeah it's just kind of like a culmination of all your hard work your blood sweat tears you know and then to finally see it coming to fruition is uh is just a really cool special special moment that not many people get to experience how has this olympics been different from previous olympics you've competed in yeah so i mean obviously covid right um it especially affected the lead up to the Olympics. You know, we could we didn't have our regular series stops. We didn't get a lot of competition in that year that um, the Olympics was extended. Uh, so that was that was upsetting. And then the Olympics themselves. I mean, you know, we had to be masked at all times. We got COVID tested every single day, um, and we couldn't go out and do much when at the previous one, we were allowed to, you know, travel in Ubers and like go to like the USA house or the Nike house or something like that, where as this one was, we were pretty much just in the village. And I mean, you know, still, still very special. I mean, it's such a cool 
experience and uh yeah it's it was it was a little bit different this time but it, it was still very special of course what was the preparation like preparing for this olympics yeah uh i mean it's pretty similar to every tournament that we go to um you know we knew exactly who we were playing uh in the in pool play so um you know we scouted them pretty heavily from what we had on them but you know some teams we we didn't know like we didn't know what china looked like because we hadn't seen them in i mean over a year so i mean a team can change significantly in over a year so we did a lot of focusing on ourselves and getting better at what we were good at and uh yeah there was some unexpected you know, unexpected things that were going to happen and we just had to roll with it. So, um, but yeah, the preparation was pretty standard, like a normal tournament. What was game day like playing in the Olympics? Um, game day is intense because, you know, normally our tournaments are two days long, but the Olympics are three. So you have to kind of like stay in this focused mindset especially because there was about eight hours between games so you had to play your game then you needed to shut off recover flush the game whatever happened in it good or bad and then um just start your recovery so that you could perform for the the next game can you talk about of course the 2016 season going to the pan american games yeah um So Pan Ams was really cool because it is basically like a miniature Olympics in the fact that, you know, you get there, it's like dorm style set up, which isn't normally how we would go to a tournament. And so we we were in suites and um, you, you get your gear, you get like a big bag of gear, like Nike stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just like the Olympics, but on a smaller scale. And uh, we played in a really cool stadium in Toronto. And uh, that, was, that is probably still to this day the loudest stadium I've ever played in. Uh, we were playing Canada in the final and we were in Canada. So, uh, yeah, it was just roaring loud. I, I don't think someone 10 feet away from me could hear me when the crowd was going. So, um, yeah, that that was a crazy, a crazy time. Of course, during the Olympics, when things like that happen, how are you able to communicate with your teammates? So obviously y'all still have that chemistry. Yeah. Um a lot of it is maybe connecting one-on-one if if things aren't, you know, going well or things like that. Um, you gotta like physically go over to someone <laughs> if you want if you want to say something. But you know, this Olympics was very different you know we didn't have spectators it was dead quiet in the stadium and uh you know I didn't really mind it too much it's kind of like being at practice um and any of the competitions that we had in 2021 uh had no spectators so it wasn't really that big of a deal but it I mean honestly it helps because you can hear every single thing someone's saying so um yeah, I didn't, I didn't mind it too much. What were some of your game day routines and rituals that you have? Um, probably my strangest thing that I do is I always bring like a two pound bag of Twizzlers with me uh, whenever we travel. And right before, so after our warm up, we come back into the locker room and we put on our jerseys and we have like you know, a couple of minutes to go to the bathroom or whatever we need to do to get ready. And that's when I eat two Twizzlers before, before I go out onto the pitch. So. <laughs> what are some of your favorite memories and moments during your career and during this Olympics? Yeah. So um, my favorite memory has got to be winning Barrett's in 2019. Um, you know, it was just like a steady build throughout that whole season and then for the last tournament we finally you know did it and we won that 
uh, tournament and that was my first ever tournament I've won with USA Rugby. So uh, yeah, that was just a, a very special moment. And then uh, after that in 2019, uh, we won Glendale, which was our home tournament. So like to have my mom there and my best friends, like it, that was really cool to, to win that tournament as well. Of course, what are some of your favorite moments and memories from this previous Olympics? Previous Olympics. Um, let's see. I mean, one, like one thing that just stands out for me is watching my teammate Alona Mar become TikTok famous when we were there. That was pretty crazy. Um, she, I think she's actually like famous now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that was one of my favorite uh, memories from the Olympics. Uh, it was a cool moment for her and for the team, you know. What advice would you have college, of course, rugby players looking to play rugby in college? Um. I would tell people that are playing college rugby, is that, what, is that mm -hmm. the question? Yes. Um, I would tell them to get their degree <laughs> and then, you know, uh, keep playing, find those clubs and get it out there, get yourself to club nationals. If you're trying to go to a higher level, um, yeah, get, get to club nationals and that's where you'll be seen by top coaches. What advice would you give professional rugby players looking to get their first start in the Olympics? Yeah. Um, you know, I think the biggest challenge is once, once you become professional is remembering that you're playing a sport and you need to be having fun. And if you're not having fun, then you really need to take a step back and evaluate your balance of life because once you start stressing over the sport and, and it's and it's not an enjoyable time that's when your play is going to go down so um really enjoying those moments with your teammates and um staying present and cherishing every moment really how does it feel to of course have the olympics behind your last name um it's it's pretty cool you know i don't I don't like to throw it around very much. Um, people ask me about it, I, I'll talk about it, but um, it, it is like, I recognize that it's a huge honor and a privilege and not many people uh, get to have that behind them, especially two. Uh, I didn't know I would be going for two, you know? Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a huge honor. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Sure. Um, my Instagram is lauren.doyle23. And I think my, my TikTok, which I'm not very, I'm not on that very much, but I try. Uh, I think that's like Lauren Doyle 230 something like that. And then just Lauren Doyle on Facebook. Thank you again, Lauren Doyle, for your interview, and best of luck in your future with the U.S. Rugby. Thank you so much. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Lauren Doyle, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.